Foundation, Ru Diskin, Director of Projects and Culture, and Mira Mahfouz, who is uh, in charge of the Foundation's activities in East Jerusalem. Uh, they are here with us today to speak about the way the Foundation rose up to the occasion and has been assisting the vulnerable communities in our city. Liat Rosner, the spokesman of the Jerusalem Foundation, is also with us today and she will be happy to assist you later with any further information you may need. Let's start with you, Shai. Uh, tell us briefly what the Jerusalem Foundation was doing in regular or normal time and how the crisis changed the activities of uh, the foundation. You know, good morning, Uri. Good morning, everyone. Uh, if uh, you would ask me a year and a half ago when I came uh, first to the office uh, in the Jerusalem Foundation and uh, started my position as the Jerusalem Foundation president, I would never believe that one day part of my role will be to supply food packages to the most vulnerable uh, communities in the city of Jerusalem. For sure, it caught us in the middle of very important uh, process of uh, rebuilding and redefining the, 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 the main role of the Jerusalem Foundation toward the year 2030. But as everyone knows, Jerusalem is the biggest, uh, the, 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 the biggest city and the poorest city in, in Israel. And as always, and for sure now, this is the biggest challenge uh, of, uh, of Israel. This is the most diverse city. This is uh, the city that has so many different communities with so many different cultures. And uh, so many people are, are living under the, the, the poverty line. So the situation right now in the last two months forced us immediately to adjust to ourselves to the immediate needs of the city. I must tell you and, uh, and, and, and to give uh, really great feedback to the mayor and the city administration. They immediately succeed to identify the major needs or the basic and the major needs of the city. The city took responsibility greatly, but they could immediately identify the needs of the city that can, be, can get the answers from the city or from the government and they ask our help. We succeeded, succeeded uh, to do something immediately that started uh, the, the initiative to support different projects and programs in the city of Jerusalem. We reallocate some of the funds that we already had in our hands and designated and reallocated to the basic needs that were pointed by, by the city. Since then, of course, others that we start to tell the story of the city of Jerusalem, others from all over the world, and I must be proud in this case, and from Israel as well, join us to support by uh, uh, more resources to the different needs that were raised by, by, by the city and by our professional uh, team. So in, 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 in two, three days, really in two, three days, we moved from dealing and raising and giving support, raising resources and giving support to so many different programs and projects in culture, in uh, civil society, in art, we moved the, the ship immediately into giving the answers to the immediate needs of the city. Slowly, slowly, we were positively surprised by the support that we succeed to get from our friends from all over the world, from Canada, from UK, from uh, America. And we know the situation is all over the world now, but together with the meaningful role the Jerusalem Foundation has now, and with the special needs that the city has with so many vulnerable communities, we are so glad and happy and proud that we have such good friends all over the world that are willing to support the different initiative of the Jerusalem Foundation in the city of Jerusalem. About the project, the program the, 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 uh, itself, uh, 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 um, Ruth and uh, Mira will uh, uh, tell more, but really now, part of what we are doing regularly, the main focus, most of the energy of the Jerusalem Foundation in the last six weeks, seven weeks, 
and for the next uh, few weeks, hopefully only next uh, few weeks, is designated only to try to give the answer to the immediate needs and the, some of them is basic needs of the different communities in the city of Jerusalem. Okay, so, so let's uh, switch to you, uh, Ruth. You're in charge of, uh, in, in regular time, of projects and uh, culture. So can you elaborate or tell us specifically which uh, vulnerable communities you have been serving? Yes. Um, so as, uh, as Shai, Shai uh, said, we, we were obliged to move really quickly and fastly and as fast as, as, fast as, as quickly as possible uh, to adjust to, to the needy and to the most emergent needs. Uh, we started with uh, 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 joining a food distribution uh, big projects, one of the, of the municipality, but not just, uh, in all over, all over the city, identifying uh, really the people who needed the most. Uh, we did, uh, we prepared the packages for, um, for uh, medical crews that were obliged to go to quarantine because of their uh, of, uh, dealing with the coronavirus, COVID-19 uh, uh, sick people. Uh, we uh, started giving money um, in a more um, uh, to generate money also for the uh, women, uh, battered women uh, shelters around the city. Um, we started giving money to uh, um, to the shelters for kids that uh, were taken or that are taken away from their homes because of a uh, long uh, uh, negligence or even abuse. And um, let me see if I forgot anything like really, uh, uh, yes, yes. We also um, uh, gave a, an extra strength to Atta, but this is, uh, Mira will uh, explain more in uh, East Jerusalem. And we gave an extra strength to a similar um, um, NGO in the west uh, part of the city that supports uh, old people and helps them get uh, their uh, rights and then and and uh, and so we also have several other uh, um, ngos that are helping old people holocaust survivors uh, people that are lonely and people that are anyway uh, um, uh, have to be in their homes um, and, and not just in money for food and uh, special uh, so, 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 you, so when you say uh, we are giving support or we are giving food or, or help, uh, it's not the foundation itself, but it's through other NGOs which specialize or which do it yes. anyway. Yes, true, but we are, we are managing it, we are controlling it, everything is done according to our supervision. But I must say that uh, in these very uh, special times, uh, the president of the foundation and the CEO and all of us at the foundation found ourselves like really on the, on the Passover Eve, uh, making the baskets also uh, personally and putting uh, notes and putting uh, greeting cards and everything. So the foundation, everyone uh, in the foundation was, was also giving a hand, like also literally and not just, uh, uh, we did everything that was needed in order to uh, put everything, um, uh, uh, on the go. Uh, we also gave uh, extra money to, uh, to Alzheimer and Dementia NGO because they have special uh, requests, especially at these times, because they cannot help the people on the spot, but at least they try to do something uh, digitally or uh, in an online way, and uh, to all kinds of um, NGOs like this. So we really try to tackle down all the neighborhoods that have uh, very vulnerable populations. And we are especially proud uh, of what we did in East Jerusalem. And for that, I will let uh, Mira uh, Mahfouz, uh, my but, colleague. But, uh, just before we, we move to, to Mira, I want to ask you something which has a long-term uh, implications. I mean, uh, during the crisis, you're helping these uh, vulnerable communities uh what's going to happen uh, after the crisis you you'll have to return to your previous uh, roles i mean how how are you going to handle them handle them i will let uh, shy maybe answer because this is what we are basically asking ourselves but let's yeah uh, first of all uh, uh, allow me to go for a second 
back to the project. And I would like to, to remind everyone about accessibility. Don't forget that we are dealing with some of the communities in Jerusalem that doesn't have no accessibility to what you and me and others have. If we are speaking about our rights, for example, when we are, uh, the, our employer send us to, to, uh, to period of unemployment, vacation uh, to, uh, without payment, you know how to handle it, she knows how to handle it, everyone knows how to handle it, but try to figure the language barrier. There is a big community in Jerusalem that lost their job, but they don't have the accessibility to get the rights. So it's not only basic needs by supplying them food, it's about helping them to get the rights from the city or from the government. This is one, if it's language barrier. But another thing, we are speaking in Zoom, yeah? And we sending our kids to have school from distance by using computers. There are big communities in Jerusalem, the Orthodox, that are not using computers, they are not using tablets. So it's very easy for us to get together through Zoom or to learning through Zoom or even have some, you know, uh, time to watch movies or to keep us busy with watching a uh, binge of Netflix. Try to, 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 to imagine kids in the families of 12, 10 people in family in, in small apartment, and this is a big part of the population of Jerusalem that doesn't have no access to computers, laptops, or even smartphones. So accessibility, it's really urgent and immediate needs of the city. So part of our support was just to buy computers and touch screen. The kids with special needs, or people with special needs all over the city, east and west, that they don't have any more the routine of the life. And they need some way to keep the relationship with the teacher, with the consultant that's working with them, with the psychologist. Need, again, accessibility to those services. We can, again, establish call center for, for, for uh, kids with special needs. But how they will be in touch with them without accessibility through Shai, you mentioned you mentioned the ultra orthodox, the Haredi community. Uh, they usually take care of themselves. I mean, is this a, this crisis open an opportunity for the foundation to reach out to this community? No doubt. Only yesterday, the main request that we received from one of the community centers in uh, one of the. Uh, big uh, orthodox uh, uh, neighborhood was about laptops and touch screen. And they came to us in, 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 in items that they will never have an idea in the past that they can approach us or they will to, they are even willing to consider to approach us for using laptops or, 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 or computers. But the main need of this community center of the orthodox neighborhood was about tablets and about touch streams for the families. This was number one in their uh, 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 priorities. Not food packages, not uh, 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 other uh, uh, medicines or things that basic needs. It was about how we can help them to, uh, to buy more laptops or computers to distribute it all over the community. And this That's is the end of community. It's let's move to East Jerusalem and, yeah, okay. uh, and let's hear about, uh, I, I know that this is a priority of the Jerusalem Foundation to start with, but how, how has the crisis changed the, the situation? So Mira, please. Mira Mahfouz, she is in charge of activities of the Jerusalem Foundation in East Jerusalem. Okay, so um, let's say uh, before the crisis, that situation in Israel wasn't always easy for people, uh, economically, uh, especially economically. Um, everyone knows that uh, the salaries there are so low and it's not uh, um, suited for the Israeli uh, minim minimum salary and uh, things like that. And most of the uh, uh, men works and women uh, are in the houses watching for children because there is no kindergartens or um, uh, places that they can uh, put their children in order they, to, to go and uh, 
also work and help in a, a uh, bringing money home with the husband. So um, in this crisis, the, the, the most need that immediately in the, in the first uh, first two days that uh, uh, I was um, having calls about and also in here in the in Jerusalem Foundation is how to uh, supply a uh, food for uh, family for people because um, I, I think according to the um, Jerusalem uh, research um, um, Institute for Research Policy. Yeah, I, I, it, something like 80% uh, of East Jerusalem population are living under the uh, poor, uh, okay, average, okay. average uh, um, poor. So um, I, every day I, I have a, a lots of uh, requests and uh, people are coming uh, uh, asking me if this if they are uh, organizations of or individual people that uh, call me and they they just want to know how they can uh, get some uh, food uh, uh, supplies or uh, from where or uh, how uh, we can help and support uh, support them how how what is the response i mean what is the response of the people in East Jerusalem to these kind of uh, activities. They're grateful, they want to cooperate with uh, uh, an Israeli organization or they don't care because they need the food. Um, there are two kinds of organizations that are now working in East Jerusalem, especially in uh, distributing uh, food packages. Uh, organization that uh, they recognize themselves as Palestinian and uh, the other one that Israeli. Um, both of them are working in distributing food. Uh, for this time, people really don't care if they are Palestinian or Israeli. They care only about getting the food package. So all the institutions in East Jerusalem, no matter uh, how they um, define themselves, they all wo are working uh, and distributing food. And people just... Um, I don't care. There's no, um, you know, about the normalization or um, getting a, um, they are, um, no one is saying no for help, no matter where, from where it is coming, if it is from the municipality, from other Israeli government or from a Palestinian a, a organization, they don't care, especially that, you know, in uh, two days, uh, Ramadan month is starting and um, it's, it's hard to, um, most of the people, especially uh, because Ramadan for the recent years had came uh, in, in the summer and now it's coming like in, in the middle. Um, so most of the people used to uh, work so hard before Ramadan so they can, um, um, you know, uh, uh, afford themselves not working a whole month in Ramadan so they can uh, fast and pray and do all the things and also to have uh, food for their families. So now we had this crisis like a month and a half before Ramadan and already the, the food, uh, uh, it's all about food uh, uh, supplies. And um, I already like uh, three weeks ago, I um, um, mentioned that um, it's great that we are working now for uh, giving a food supplies, but we have to look uh, forward and look further and start preparing uh, for supplying food for uh, Ramadan months. Uh, it will be harder to, to, to do it in Ramadan than like three weeks ago. And I think that we had succeeded um, to help. And now we, um, like in the, the recent two days, we are uh, uh, helping a um, organization in uh, getting some food uh, supplies for uh, Ramadan. Uri, if, uh, if I may, I would like uh, to, to, to give a little bit uh, 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 wider picture about East Jerusalem. And this is uh, about, you know, when I mentioned before the coordination between the city and the, and the, the Jerusalem Foundation. The city has a long list of people that are registered in the past in the different welfare departments. And they are eligible to get the, 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 uh, the food supply from the city and from the government. And they very well uh, known, the list are very well organized. And the city is taking care of uh, those lists. This is a big list, 
but uh, this is part of, uh, uh, of what is very well known. The problem that six weeks ago, immediately, big, uh, bigger piece of the communities in East Jerusalem joined this position to live under the poverty line and no one recognized because they could make a living until six weeks ago or two months ago. Small businesses, especially in East Jerusalem, small businesses or, you know, people that made uh, 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 some living out of paying by cash, you know, and they never were registered in no, 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 nowhere, so they don't have no rights. So we found ourselves with a lot of requests of people that the welfare departments of the city that function, function very well, don't recognize at all. And they are really suffering from, we, we, we had witnesses even about, you know, really bad situation in some of uh, the, 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 the East Jerusalem neighborhoods because they came to the welfare department, no one recognized them there, they weren't in the list, and suddenly they have really immediate and basic needs in one day. So they were okay, but in one day, they moved from one position to another position. That really forced us to be very efficient, to give an answer immediately, and to do it in coordination with the city that we will not do duplicate. The ones from the welfare department will receive what they uh, receiving from uh, the welfare department. The ones that no one knows about them, this is part of our responsibility. So this is okay. one. Okay. Second, we, we mentioned the language barrier. It's about information. Uh, most of the information is in Hebrew or maybe in English. Arabic, it's not enough. And the information about your rights, rights about your health and health services, writes about what you can get from the social security or from other agencies. And this is really big part of what we are supporting. We, we mentioned ATA Center that is have a, a, a different offices all over the city, but this is one uh, element of what we are doing. It's very important. And the third okay. one is very interesting is about the volunteers in East Jerusalem as well that are willing to cooperate. And, you know, we are speaking about uh, uh, delivery food packages. A lot of volunteers need to do so. And they are organized by the local community centers in East Jerusalem. So let, let, let Mira just let, give you a few words about Mini Active, one of these organizations, and the second one is Ata. Ata in Arabic means giving, uh, because it, uh, it, will, it will give you a bigger picture of uh, what's going on. Okay. So please tell us about it. So as I, I mentioned before about the salaries, uh, yes, speak about uh, speak louder uh, a bit louder <clears throat> you can hear me now yes okay so as i as i mentioned before about the salaries most of the people that are working are not getting um at uh, 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 salary, salary. Salary. Yeah, they're paying by cash. They, they, they were paying by cash they are paying by daily salaries so they don't have any kind of working conditions most of them can go also for the um, insurance or uh, uh, to get for um, um, a money. social security yeah social security or um, for um, um, the working department that they got um, um, a, a vacation with, with no um, uh, payment with no payment so uh, that's why uh, East Jerusalem is so uh, uh, problematic and there, that the crisis is is, is very huge in there uh, uh, and um, be, beside this the, the the language barrier as Shai uh, mentioned um, most of the population doesn't speak uh, or let's say can't read and write in Hebrew, so they can't uh, go to the um, insurance and uh, fill papers or even uh, by the app and by the link, they, they can't do that and, because everything in Hebrew. So uh, one of the things that um, we also um, uh, funded is uh, two, uh, two um, um, NGOs. Uh, NGOs. Uh, to um, NGOs. Uh, no, it, it, ah, uh, positions. Positions. We, positions. We, in uh, the first NGO is uh, called the uh, Ata Center. 
that uh, we are working with for several years now to uh, help people to uh, find out what their uh, uh, rights, uh, to help them in, uh, in uh, 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 the rights in the um, insurance in, in every uh, government uh, uh, office and they help them uh, uh, fill papers, help them uh, uh, get advice and to know what to do and uh, etc. And in this time of the crisis, uh, because of um, lots of them that uh, they were, were sent home and they have uh, to go and fill the papers for the vacation uh, with no salary and et cetera and everything in Hebrew. So a lot of pressure were uh, put on, on the organization. They have something like 30, 35 volunteers and only uh, two and a half people that are getting uh, um, um, salaries paid uh, for the salaries. So we funded like uh, um, uh, additional two positions to help uh, more people into filling all the papers that they have to do to, to give them help, to uh, advise them where to go and wh what to do and, and etc. And another um, NGO that we are working with, it says a, a woman, a, a social ac a activist, a activist uh, that uh, we also uh, uh, a, a, we work with uh, for several years that the, the women, uh, what they are doing in general, that they um, uh, try, uh, every, every group of women in their own neighborhood try to recognize the problems like the trash problem and the electricity problem, streets problem, and, uh, and they learned how to um, call the municipality and ask for someone to, or some, uh, some help in fixing things and getting things in their neighborhoods. And recently, uh, um, these women also um, um, get uh, um, involved in, the, uh, in their neighbor, neighbors uh, to identify more families, especially uh, uh, like single mothers, and yes. uh, uh, that they have to stay at home and they don't know how to, uh, they are not like connected to all what's happening and all the help that they can get. Okay. Um, and they are um, every group of women is working uh, are working in their neighbors in, uh, to to recognize these families and also we are helping them in the uh, um, food supplies. Okay, so uh, back to you, Ruth. I'd like to ask you about uh, the other uh, area that you are in charge of, and that is culture. What's going to happen with? culture in our city, because we know this is the last thing that uh, in, in all exit uh, strategies is considered to be left for the uh, for the final stage. And what's going to happen with the city that uh, tried to uh, develop for itself a, the image or the nature of a thriving cultural center? Everything is closed. And I have to some uh, due diligence here. I'm involved with the uh, Symphony Orchestra of Jerusalem and with Micro Theater, and they're both shut down and uh, waiting for better days. Yes, definitely. Culture and art uh, is, a, is a whole is a different uh, ballgame, especially at this time. What we're doing right now with the foundation is uh, trying to get from the from uh, some 40 uh, projects or institutions that submitted and uh, won our uh, grants for 2020 to get them uh, to get them to send us what they're going to do here from the ground and see if and how we can adjust uh, to their uh, corona times uh, projects or needs uh, of course uh, we will have to uh, being a, a, a foundation uh, that is generating money we will have to go back with the request to the donors and receive, get their, their, their permission to deviate the money, if at all. Uh, but we are already seeing all of us, not all of us, but some of us at the foundation, we are also members of the boards of all the major um, uh, cultural institutions of the city. So really, so we are all very much, our really, we are really uh, with hands on the ground and ears uh, listening to what's going on with the Cinematheque, with the Israel Festival, with Mishkenot Shananim, uh, the Khan Theater, the Academy of Music and Dance, and uh, many more. And we hear from the managements of these uh, institutions constantly, and we see how 
there are some of them are managing to adapt to the changes and to the corona times and some of them are a bit slower than the others but undoubtedly each and one of them will have to um, to see and check their uh, uh, their uh, um, sources if not for this year at least for 2021 and and, and all of them will have to adjust to corona times uh, when it comes to culture and arts events because uh, we already know that the Israel festival has uh, been postponed uh, for uh, until further notice maybe December who knows the Jerusalem International Film Festival for example that was usually takes place in July. Uh, we just had the board meeting and it will be postponed for now until October and let's see. And this is, and this is we're talking about the big cultural events, the anchor cultural events of the city, not to mention the very small ones. So we are all having many, much more question marks than, the, uh, than exclamation marks. And we are all uh, um, um, uh, responding uh, on the go. Uh, but we will have to address our donors and we will have to think uh, thoroughly what the foundation, Jerusalem Foundation role is in this, uh, uh, this field also. Maybe Shai wants to add anything about adjustment in general for the future. I have, I have, I have, a, a, I have a question for Shai, uh, the last one, because we're going to wrap up now. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I want to commend you for your uh, activities, you know. It's like the daily briefing when the, the Director General of the Ministry of Health is praising the Prime Minister. So I, I'm praising you now, guys. Uh, but seriously, you're doing a great job uh, when, when this is really needed. Uh, but I want to ask you, uh, going back to philanthropy, uh, it's, it's easy, relatively easy to raise money for a crisis, for, for uh, uh, problems, for terror victims, for uh, hunger, etc. But uh, the, at least in the la last years, there was a, an attempt to portray Jerusalem as a city of success, a city of progress. Uh, aren't you afraid that uh, this is going to move philanthropy back into the oil, oil vey, they're going to kill us, oil vey, we're poor, help us, these kind of things. Yeah, I, I, I started my, my our talk here this morning that I never believed that I will need to deal with food supply as the, the president of Jerusalem Foundation when I came here first a year and a half ago. But definitely, definitely, uh, there's going to be a new world of philanthropy in the next few months, few weeks, we don't know yet. but. First of all, we, we, we need to understand two things. First of all, if we are su succeeding now, because you're speaking about crisis, we used to, you know, when we had crisis in, in Israel or in Jerusalem, it was our crisis and it, we were alone in the world. Now the entire world is suffering the same. Some of our friends in New York or London are struggling even harder than Jerusalem. So it's not easy to raise money during crisis especially not when we are thinking about worldwide crisis. So maybe in the future we will need to raise more funds from bigger group of people, but with small amount of money. So maybe the, 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 the way of, of thinking will be changed. But the opportunity that we have now, it's not about the crisis. The opportunity is about the Jewish Foundation position. If we are now doing the right work to coordinate everything with the city and to give the answer to the real needs of the city. Right now it's emergency needs, basic needs. And, we'll, and people from all over the world will recognize the Jewish Foundation as the coordination of the entire culture, art, uh, civil society, feudal leadership uh, 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 um, uh, 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 platform. This will help us people will have the confidence to work with us in the future. So you're right, crisis time, crisis time it's sometimes easy to raise money. But if we will exercise and we will behave in a way of leadership, in a way that we really coordinate the needs of the city and will be reliable and we will do it in an efficient way, 
I'm sure that we will possess ourselves for the future <laughs> as the main a, 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 a philanthropic organization in, in Jerusalem. Thank you. Uh, uh, one last question to Mira that just came up. Uh, the question is, how do you uh, how do you know who is approaching you uh, and, and how you verify if they're really in need or just snoring? I don't know if you know the word to snore. I think you do. <laughs> or they're just using the, uh, the opportunity to, to grab some food or, or, or money. And how do people in East Jerusalem uh, approach you? Okay, so um, first of all, the municipality and um, the welfare department are working on um, distributing uh, uh, food um, packages and also a hot, a hot, hot meals for the elderly. So um, we are working with the uh, um, community centers in East Jerusalem that are connected also to the uh, welfare department and with the municipality. Uh, they have an online uh, uh, application that uh, one of uh, the things that they have to fill in is the ID number. And after filling in, you know, um, the, the organization is taking all the IDs and sending them to the department, um, uh, welfare department and the municipality. In case that uh, this person or this family um, are not getting any help from these two um, um, sources, they will be in the list of getting a, a, a package from the community center. Okay. And okay. Yeah, I think we'll set up with this Ramadan Karim to you and to the, your, your people there. Uh, I want to thank you, Shai Doron, the president of the Jerusalem Foundation, and Udiskin, uh, the director of uh, projects and culture, and Mira Mahfouz, uh, who's in charge of uh, East Jerusalem activities. Thank you and uh, uh, good luck with all your endeavors. Uh, guys, thank you for being with us. Um, heads up for our next webinar tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. We will host Professor Naomi Habib of Jerusalem U on uh, developing a quick, handy and simple and cheap testing kits. And at 4 p.m. tomorrow, we'll have Yaakov Nagel, former head of the National Security uh, Council, uh, on the management of the crisis. Stay tuned for our next webinar. And thank, thank you, Uli. Thank you. Thank you.